It's been a phenomenal week in Texas. I've enjoyed hanging out with the friends I've made in the Austin area, and among other things, I've had some amazing meals. As far as the poker scene goes, there's nowhere more exciting than The Lodge. Just in the past few days, I've seen everything from high stakes streamed cash games with pots over $700,000 to the room being filled to the brim for a $200 400k guarantee that gets shattered with over $800,000 in the prize pool and over $100,000 for first. It's a special place. Today we're playing the Friday 510 game for the second week in a row. I buy in for $3,000. That's the max. Last week was perhaps the best 510 game that I've ever played. I'm hoping today will be similar. Based on the list, it looks like it's going to be a lot of the same opponents who are mostly recreational players and then Doug Polk who's also playing his second Friday in a row. This is a big step down for Doug. It's his first session back since taking a tough six-figure loss on the streamed game previously in the week. He's the one who lost that gigantic $700,000 pot that I alluded to earlier. The first cards are dealt at 11.14 in the morning. We get things started with a $25 PLO double board bomb pot. There are only four players seated at the moment, but we're still waiting for some people to get some chips. The first flop is Jack-10-4 with two hearts. It's a good one for us, so we look down at 5-4-4-deuce four, four, in the small blind. We've got bottom set. The second flop is Queen-7-6 with two hearts. We've got a draw to the nuts there with our open ender. We're first to act. All players check. If you thought the flops were good, you're going to like the turns. The top one is the three of diamonds. We retain the third nuts, and the bottom turn is the eight of spades giving us the matching third nuts. I bet 75. The big blind calls, his name's Mo. We've had some battles with him in the last two vlogs. The cutoff raises to 400. It starts getting dicey when we're seeing action from multiple opponents and don't have the best possible hand on either board. The button folds, I call for 325 more. Mo isn't going anywhere, he loves to gamble. He calls, three of us are seeing the rivers. The top rivers, the jack of spades, pairing the board and giving us a full house. It's tough to know if it's good or bad for us. The second river is the king of hearts, and it's definitely bad for us as the flesh draw completes. I check. Despite being the most passive player on the turn, Mo bets 600. It's a very milky sizing. The cutoff is no longer confident that he can win. He folds. We're getting too good of a price to follow suit, even though there are some scenarios where we lose on both boards to get scooped. I call. Mo got extremely lucky to win just half the pod as he shows Jack-10, deuce-deuce. He only had top two pair that improved to beat us on the first run out. The second run out, he has a busted straight draw and is playing his ducks. Our straight is best on the second board. We chop it up. Would have been nice to scoop. It's not such a bad outcome to be up a couple hundred the first hand of the day though. Next we're dealt King-9 suited in the under the gun straddle. Mo's first to act on our left. He calls the 20. The cutoff isn't going to let anyone limp in. He raises to 100. We've got a fun hand to see a flop with, plus we're getting a discount. I call for 80 more. Mo isn't afraid of a raise. He calls to close the action. We're going three ways to the flop out of position. It comes ace-nine-five with two spades. We have just enough of a piece to potentially get us into trouble. He checks to the pre-flop raiser. He makes a small wager of 75. It's actually a law in Texas that you're not allowed to fold second pair when you're getting five to one or better. I can't go back to prison. I call. Under the gun plus one, it doesn't take too long before he makes a decision. He calls as well. We're all still in it. The turn is the four of clubs. It puts a second flush draw on the board, but it's mostly a blank. I check. Under the gun plus one checks. I expect the cutoff to charge full steam ahead with a strong top pair or better. Instead, he pumps the brakes and checks back, making it unlikely that he's holding an ace. Maybe he just has something like queens, jacks, or possibly only some unpaired Broadway cards. The river's the 10 of diamonds. I'm not 100% sure that we're going to be able to win this with third pair. We've got some showdown value, but is it good enough? The cutoff didn't seem to love his hand on the turn, but he might have made a pair of 10s on the river, or he could have a high pocket pair to beat us. Any one pair hand that he'll have below aces is going to have a very tough time calling a bet, though. Mo hasn't showed much strength either. He limp called pre-flop, then called a tiny bet when he was getting over 6-1. to one. We could have him beat, or maybe he made a better pair than us on the river as well. Either way, both players probably won't like facing a bet from us when we could reasonably have top pair or better. I bet 325 ideally to get both opponents to fold a second pair type of combo. Most taking his time to consider whether or not to call. Eventually he folds. He's who I was most concerned about. The cutoff also isn't quick to let go. It feels like our pair isn't good, but the cutoff folds as well. We'll never know whether or not we were bluffing or if we had the best hand. We get the win though. With this pot coming our way, we're up about 450. 
It's time for another PLO double board bomb pot. We've got 8754 with two clubs in middle position. Six of us put in $25 each and we go straight to two flops. The first flop is ace 7 3 with two clubs. We've got a pair, double gutter, and flush draw. The second flop is queen jack 8 with two clubs. We've got bottom pair and a flush draw there as well. All of us check. The top turn is the 9 of clubs giving us the flush with the straight flush redraw. The bottom turn is the seven of diamonds, improving us to two pair, giving us a gut shot to the low straight. With so many high clubs accounted for between the two boards, despite having only the eight high flush, we've got the third nuts on the top board. Only the king and ten high flushes beat us. The small blind and big blind check. Moe's in the hijack. He checks out a turn. Hold on. It's nice to know that we don't have to worry about the opponent on our left having us beat. The small blind and big blind probably aren't too strong either. I bet 75. This is when the action takes a bizarre twist. Mo already checked out a turn. It's possible he was only doing that in an attempt to induce a bet from me because he now raises to 275. The old fake check raise. If he has something like King 10 9 with the King 10 of clubs, we're in a lot of trouble. Folds back to us. I've seen Mo make too many unorthodox plays to be willing to fold at this point. I call for 200 more. We're heads up going to the river. The top one is the queen of diamonds. It doesn't affect the strength of our hand at all. The bottom river is the ace of spades. It certainly doesn't help us any. I checked the aggressor on the previous street. The hijack bets 700, which is the max. Puts a lot of pressure on us. We probably aren't winning on the second board, but we're pretty strong on the first one. And the fake check by the opponent on the turn, followed by a raise is confusing me. I'm not entirely sure what to make of it. Given who my opponent is and what I know about him, I'm not able to get away. I call. Our fear comes to fruition. The opponent indeed has King 10 9, but he has absolutely no clubs. We win the top board with our flush beating Moe's 9s and 3s. Mo wins the bottom board with Broadway. If we could have just hit another club, 8 or 7 on the bottom board, we would have scooped. Instead, we chop it up again. It's everyone's favorite outcome. Here we've got ace 10 offsuit in the cutoff. The straddle's on as it is nearly every hand. We're gonna be playing this one. I raise the 60. A few players want to battle. The button, big blind, and under the gun straddle are all call. We're going four ways to the flop. Comes ace 9 8 rainbow. The opponents all check. The ace high flops are good for our range and our actual hand. We've got top pair and a backdoor straight draw. I bet 150. If we can get this down to heads up while we're playing in position, that'd be the best case scenario. Button folds, so we'll at least be playing in position. The big blind calls, the under the gun straddler folds, we get exactly what we were hoping for, it's down to two of us. The turn is the king of hearts, the big blind checks, the opponent could potentially have something like king nine or king eight suited, but if he flopped two pair better, he would have likely check raised us at that point. This card is better for our range since the opponent would have three bet pre-flop with ace king or king, so we don't need to be worried about being up against those combinations. We have the green light to bet again for value. I bet 350 to target lower aces and draws. The big blind calls quickly, which is often a reliable tell that the opponent has a drawing hand. The river is the jack of clubs, completing some straights. The big blind checks. I'm not sure if we'll be able to get three streets of value from too many worse hands. I check back. The big blind has the type of hand that we suspected. The opponent flopped the open-ended straight draw and turned a flush draw to go with it. We get a fortunate run out to maintain the lead and win the pot. This one allows us to be in four-figure profit territory. We're up 1150 at the moment. About 20 minutes later, we're dealt king-queen suited in the hijack. I raise a 60. If we're not going multi-way to the flop, it's almost not Texas poker. The cutoff, small blind, and under the gun straddle are all call. We're going four ways to the flop against three recreational players. The dealer puts out king jack eight rainbow. We've got top pair and some backdoor draws. The small blind and under the gun check is another flop that's good for our range and actual hand. We can have all the sets, some two pair combos, and the strongest one pair hands. Our opponents won't typically have sets of kings or jacks. We have removal to two pair. I bet 150. The cutoff is Mo. We know that he likes to play a lot of hands and he rarely folds when I'm betting. He calls, the small blind calls as well. The under the gun straddler sees a lot of interest from everyone, but he's not concerned. In fact, he puts in the check raise to 575. This opponent has been playing on the wilder and more aggressive side. He could be doing this with all kinds of straight draws. I'm not worried about the opponents behind me having us beat because they only called our flop bet rather than raise on a coordinated board. The path we'll choose comes down to whether or not I believe that we've got the straddler beat. He's mostly just revving pocket eights, king eight, and king jack. 
even in the instances when we are up against those hands, we'll still have outs against his two pair combos, and there are a lot of turns that'll give us potentially more outs if we're behind. I call for 425 more, we'll hopefully be heads up going forward because it could be difficult to play future streets multi-way. The cutoff and small blind fold, we get what we wanted, it's down to two of us and we're in position. The turn is the nine of diamonds completing a couple streets, we at least pick up a gut shot straight draw, and we have removal to the nuts. The opponent has slightly more than a pot sized bet left in his stack, he jams for 1790 total, it was a quick decision to rip it which feels a little off to me, like the opponent could be bluffing with some type of combo draw, or at least isn't totally confident that he's got the winner. We get a count just to confirm the total. I don't like the position that we're in. Folding is definitely reasonable, especially against certain players. I just can't get myself to do it here. I call to take the gamble. Let's just drill a 10 one time so we don't have to sweat too much. We're running it once in a pot over $5,000. This is a big one, the kind that can make or break a session. The river is the queen of diamonds putting four to the straight on board. We beat virtually no semi bluffs and we're still losing to set combos. Luckily for us, the opponent turns over king eight offsuit for top and bottom pair. He gets every dollar in good, but we had quite a few outs with all cards from a nine to a queen giving us the victory. We win a monster pot. I'm always a little frustrated with myself when I get it in bad. That's not how I prefer to win, but in this case, I'll take it. We haven't been down at any point today. After a fortunate river card, we're winning 3,800. 45 minutes go by, then we pick up ace 10 suited under the gun plus one. Doug bought the button in the big blind and straddled since it's basically been a mandatory straddle. Under the gun limps in for 20. This player has won several big pots and has the largest stack of the table with 9,000 in front of him. I raise to 100. The middle position player calls, that's Mo. The cutoff calls, he's a professional musician. Doug calls in the big blind to defend. The under the gun limper folds. We're going four ways to the flop. The dealer puts out 755 five with two spades. We've got a flush draw with two overs. Doug checks, with multiple opponents on a paired board. I don't want to go too crazy with a draw that might be no good. I check. Mo checks, the last player to act bets 350. It's a large sizing. Doug folds, there shouldn't be too many fives in the cutoffs range, and I don't think he'd make this big of a bet with a full house. This actually feels like we're up against the worst flush draw, but we could be up against a seven or a small to medium pocket pair that we'll have plenty of outs against. I call, I don't think Mo has ever gotten to a flop and then not seen a turn. He calls as well, three of us remain. The turn is the deuce of hearts, it's a major brick. I check, Mo checks, the cutoff has 690 total. He jams. It's possible that both opponents have worse flush draws, or maybe one of them has a straight draw. I don't get the sense that the cutoff is that strong. We're getting 3-1 to one on a call, plus Mo will likely call this turn bet since the deuce didn't change anything, and Mo hates folding more than my newborn hates letting me sleep. I call. I'm actually hoping for a call from Mo so that we'll have an opportunity to win more money if we happen to hit the flush. Mo doesn't let us down. He calls. There's a chance that we'll have a side pot, but the main pot is already big. The river is another deuce, double pairing the board. We end up with just ace high. I check, there's no need for me or Mo to bet as a bluff into a dry side pot. Mo checks back, it's time to see what everyone got to the river with. We show our missed flush. Mo shows that he has jack nine of spades for a missed flush as well. The cutoff wins the absolute maximum and scoops the pot with pocket fours. It's an enormous pot for a not so enormous hand. Any spade, ace, 10, or seven would have given us the victory. A spade would have been especially good because we might have been able to stack Mo with flush over flush. Instead, I lose a large chunk, but I can't complain about the run out after getting lucky in the previous all in. It just hurts a little to watch this pot get pushed the other direction. In this one, we're dealt pocket threes and the under the gun straddle. The cutoff raises to 50. The button calls. We've got a good hand to go multi-way with and we're closing the action. I call for 30 more. Three of us are seeing the flop. The dealer puts out queen three deuce rainbow. We've got bottom set with two candidates to give us all their money. I check. Both players disappointingly check back. It's the first set in a hold'em hand that we've hit all day and we might not get any action. The turn is the ace of clubs putting a flush draw on the board. There's a good chance that one of the opponents checked back ace high on the flop and have now made top pair. I put in a sneaky check in order to induce a bet so that we can go for the check raise. Cutoff falls for our trap, betting 75. Guys, I hate to let you down, but we won't be putting in the check raise after all. I know, it's unfortunate. Don't get too sad though, we'll be putting in the check re-raise because the button raises to 300. 
After no one showed much interest on the flop, the aces heated things up. As promised, I re-raised the 700 to make the pot even bigger and charged drawing hands. This is an extremely strong looking play. I considered flatting, but that looks suspiciously strong too, and there are a lot of cards that would downgrade us on the river or make it more difficult for us to get paid. The cutoff folds. The button was the most likely person that I was expecting to see a call or fourth bet from anyway. He deliberates for half a minute. And he folds as well. It's a nice pot that we win. It was just set up so perfectly for us to maybe stack someone. The button tells me that he got away from top and bottom pair. He makes a great fold to avoid losing additional money. We need a quick break for food. One of the best parts about playing the Friday game is that lunch is regularly taken care of. Today, we have an assortment of Thai dishes delivered. It's a nice perk that you don't often see in other 5-10 games around the country. Once we're finished eating, we pick up Ace-Queen suited. We're first to act under the gun plus one. We're going to raise this up. I open to 60. The hijack, cutoff, and button all call. This isn't going to be another four-way pot though. Small blind three bets to 310. We're towards the upper middle part of our early position raise. The three better is the same opponent that we got lucky against earlier when we drilled the queen on the river to win the all-in. I called, give him a chance for his money back. The hijack, cutoff, and button fold. We're heads up and in position. The flop comes ace, deuce, deuce with two hearts. We've got top pair with the second best kicker. If we're up against the best kicker, we're going to be in trouble. Small blind down bets at 275. Hopefully he'll have some kind of worse ace or something like pocket jacks, queens, or kings. I call. There's no reason to raise and get folds out of nearly everything that we're beating. The turn is the seven of diamonds. This is always the street that's important because it often separates the contenders from the pretenders. If we see a check, we'll know that we're best, but we don't see a check. The small blind bets 700. It's starting to feel more like we're up against ace king because a lot of the time, smaller pocket pairs that haven't improved will begin to slow down. Still, we can't let go at the moment. I call. The only thing going for us is that the opponent is stuck quite a bit, mostly due to bad luck. Mostly due to bad luck against us. He could still be a bit tilted and or out for revenge. The river is the king of clubs. It's one of the worst cards that we could have seen. The small blind might have improved to top two, but even if he didn't, we'll be chopping or losing to every combo that he has containing an ace. Pocket kings improves to a full house as well, but we mostly ruled that out when he bet again on the turn. Small blind has two words for us. Oh. Oh, oh, now when he says all in twice, does that count as four words or can we still say that he has two words for us? Dudes, we're focusing on the wrong stuff now. We're facing a jam for 1585 and we beat nothing the opponent is doing this with for value. There's just so much money in the middle already. It's tough to get away from this hand. I know if I call, the opponent is going to turn over ace king. I'm going to be annoyed at myself for calling and giving him almost an extra 1600 for no reason. Uh, now it's going to be ace king. I can't help myself. At least the money will be going back to the guy who got unlucky against us in the massive 5k all-in earlier in the day. You deserve it. Oh. Chop it up. Yeah. It's a big chop against ace queen offstude that allows us to win all the money back that we invested before the river came out and a bit extra from the people who called my initial pre-flop raise. I'm not sure that I like our river call in the long run, but I'm glad it worked out this time. Today seems to be our day. We cruise for a while before picking up 7-6 suited on the button. Player in middle position raises to 75. The cutoff calls. Our hand is fun to see a flop with. We play in position. I call. Small blind calls. The under the gun straddler calls to close the action. It's a five way hand. Usually it's a sign of a great game when we're seeing this many multi-way flops. And this is no exception. The dealer puts out 10-9-8 rainbow with no club. We flop the low end of the straight. Small blind checks, the under the gun player doesn't care that he wasn't the pre-flop aggressor. He's got to get money in there and he won't wait to do it. He bets 200. The initial pre-flop raiser folds, the cutoff calls. Our hand isn't going to get any better than it is right now. There are a number of cards that will cause us to potentially lose or will kill the action. We need to play this aggressively. I raise to 1000 in order to get as much money in as we can immediately. If anyone has a higher straight, we're going to double them up. Small blind folds. Under the gun straddler regrets making his impatient $200 bet. He folds. The cutoff was interested, but not $1,000 worth of interested. He folds. We let him know that we had it as we show five cards in a row. Profiting $700 without seeing a turn isn't the worst result for the hand. We're winning over $3,000 again on the session. 
Here we're dealt ace jack of hearts in middle position. It's always fun to look down at big suited aces. I raise a 60. The button is the opponent who won the large three-way pot with pocket fours earlier against our ace high flush draw that didn't get there. He's since gone on a bad run and has lost nearly everything. He only has a few hundred in the stack. He three bet rips it for 320. That's about the perfect amount that I'd like to get in there with him. I call. The opponent is happy to turn his cards over for the vlog. He reveals that he has queen jack of spades. I, I'm, I'm in bad shape. We've got the opponent dominated at the moment. The flop comes queen 5-3 with two hearts. It's about as fun as it gets. The button takes the lead drilling top pair. We've got plenty of outs with the flush draw and the ace. The turn is the six of diamonds. It's no help. We're down to one last chance to win it all. The river is the eight of clubs. We brick it. Every day, I'm in the lab working on my flush hitting skills, but all my efforts are not paying off. We haven't hit a single one today outside of the PLO double board bomb pot. Hitting flushes is fun, so we go back to playing with four cards where I've got a chance. We're dealt jiggity jiggity tiggity thriggity with two hearts in the cutoff while eight players are participating. The first flop is jack 9-9. Nine, nine. We've got the best full house. We're only losing to quads. The second flop is 9-6-4 rainbow. We no longer have to worry about losing to quads on the first flop. Checks to us, I bet 125 for value. It'll be tough for us to win on the bottom board, so our goal is to get as many players to call us as possible on the flop in order to chop up their money with the eventual winner of the bottom board. That's why I chose a reasonable and enticing sizing for my opponents to stick around. The button calls, this is Mo. You guys should be pretty familiar with him by this point. Small blind calls, under the gun calls as well. We've accomplished our goal of getting multiple callers who could be drawing dead on the board that we have locked up. The top turn is the six of spades, we keep the nuts. The bottom turn is the four of hearts pairing the board. At least we pick up a flush draw there that may or may not be good. Checks to us, we're gonna continue firing callable amounts, I bet 350. Again, we really want as many opponents calling as possible to chop up their money. Mo always comes through, he calls, he's Mr. Reliable. Small blind under the gun have given up, they both fold. It's down to heads up, the top river is the eight of diamonds. We don't quite have the nuts there anymore since we're losing the straight flushes. That isn't a huge concern though. The bottom river is the ace of hearts completing our backdoor flush. We have a lot of value on both boards. If Mo's holding a nine or has a lower full house than us without much value on the bottom board, we could win a ton of money. There's no big risk of going with a large size bet since we'll almost for sure win half the pot. So we're free rolling the scoop. Huh? 14, 1400. One of the best things about the lodge is how on point the dealers are. Right away, they know exactly how much is in the middle. We bet the maximum amount. Mo's in the blender debating whether or not he wants to call. When he's on the fence contemplating what to do, a big gust of wind always tends to come and blow him onto the call side. The longer Mo takes, the more likely it is that we're gonna scoop him and win another huge pot. Eventually, Mo calls. We show him the boat and the flush. It's not quite good enough to win on both boards. Mo has 8-7-6-4 with two diamonds. He hit a flush on the top board that's no good, but he has a full house on the bottom board where we've got our flush. Here I was all excited. It ends up being a chopped pot though. We played a long session with a lot of interesting and big pots. It's time to rack up a solid win. Today I played for about seven hours. I won 2,900. Uh, I got to play with Doug again. This game is about the best 5-10 game that uh, I played. Played it the last two weeks now. This is day 10 for me at the Lodge playing in a row and um, having a really good time. That's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm actually headed to the Lodge right after this trip that I'm on. I'm out here at uh, Seminole Hard Rock in Hollywood, Florida. I just bagged day two, we're in the money. There were like over 1,800 entrants in this event, so $3,500 event. And uh, now there are only about 100 remaining. So just hoping to hang in there as long as possible, maybe get my name on this trophy. But then as soon as I bust out, I'm going to the Lodge to be there for the Lodge Championship Series. So hopefully I'll see you guys out there. Follow my Instagram if you guys want uh, uh, real-time updates on how this day three is gonna go, you know, as soon as you watch this. My Instagram account is at Brad Owen one 
All right, guys, hope you're doing well. Hope you're staying safe. Good luck at the tables, and I'll see you next time.